evening to all of you. It's nice to see so many people in this hall. Well, thinking that love might be harmful is uh, difficult. We just heard from Ruth uh, her um, presentation, but I think that her presentation um, integrates well with uh, my presentation. Love is the reason for happiness in our life. But maybe love is uh, harmful when there's no love, or when we suffer for love, or when we are left by our partner. But I think this is uh, part of uh, life and uh, part of uh, this amazing feeling that nature gave us. We just heard about the brain mechanisms. They are as amazing. All this gives us joy. But these same mechanisms can make us suffer. They can turn in awful mechanisms, creating the worst possible pain. So harmful love makes us suffer, or it may create suffering in the partner becomes uh, something that may result in homicide, suicide. And we uh, see that every day, see such cases every day in papers. I'm going to present three main topics. Love as a uh, an effective uh, dependence, jealousy, and uh, the inability to accept the fact that uh, love may end and uh, that may lead to stalking. This is typical of women. We cannot operate slides. So I'll try to summarize the love circuit. Uh, Ruth already mentioned it. Uh, when we How do we fall in love with somebody? It's very simple. It's very easy. We uh, fall in love with uh, somebody because a brain system is activated. It's a system that is based on anxiety and fear. It is very easy to understand. I'll give you an example. We are in uh, this hall. A strange noise uh, is heard and uh, crackling, let's say. What is it? It might be the beginning of a fire, or it might be a uh, cracking door. So while our brain is organizing our um, reaction, which might be to flee in, in a case of a fire, but just six milliseconds uh, um, pass. Let's see what happens uh, during those six milliseconds. It's the same that happens when we meet a stranger, a stranger who might turn in a partner. And, and we have uh, all the senses that are involved, uh, at the sight, uh, hearing, and, uh, and um, odor as well. And the cortex is activated when we are ready to uh, uh, run away because of a danger. Uh, there's a lot of blood in our muscles. Our heart rate increases. So all this occurs at the level of our conscience. So let's assume we meet a stranger. We have this uh, reaction, which uh, activates uh, the subcortical area, which is the Amygdala. The uh, amygdala regulates anxiety and uh, fear. And it's a sort of a, um, an orchestra conductor, a conductor that decides uh, what to do, whether to uh, run away or to fight. And this mechanism leads to a sort of a storm of uh, neurotransmitters, uh, noradrenaline, which is the one that gives us energy, that wakes us up, and the serotonin. And the hypothalamus is involved uh, as well. Hypothalamus is the factory of our hormones. Uh, 
and uh, through stress, we get ready to either run away or to fight. So that's the interesting part of the story. The hypothalamus produces uh, this important molecule, which is oxytocin. And, and you might say, it's true, when I'm in love, I'm happy. Uh, I'm not afraid, I'm not frightened. Why? Because oxytocin is an amazing molecule. It's a small peptide, nine amino acids, and you can produce it in laboratory. We administer it to uh, women during childbirth. What does it do, this amazing molecule? It acts on the overexcited uh, area. In the day when, for example, I met a stranger, but somebody I like, but the, the amygdala is then activated, and then I fall in love. Six milliseconds after that, the amygdala warms of the fact that there's no fire. You just fell in love, and then the frontal area. Uh, make me aware of that. Uh, that is to say, that make me understand that that reaction was not anxiety, was not fear, it was just falling in love. And oxytocin played a role, of, an important role, because stress systems were activated. Oxytocin calms all the area, and it calms down the stress. And at the same time, as Ruth said, it activates subcortical areas. We'll see them in a minute, which is the reward circuit. But I would like to add something else. As my colleague said, uh, the uh, mother-child uh, bond is extremely important. It's the primary uh, bond because uh, we as adolescents and uh, adults uh, may establish deep relationships and we um, manage to love somebody when we are uh, adults in a harmoni harmonious way. Why is the caregiver important? Why is the mother important? A harmonious or a good or bad relationship with the uh, mother is a good relationship is uh, like a sort of a treasure that I can uh, store in an area of my brain um, that is responsible for memory, but also for learning. And that's uh, fundamental for my relational life. Uh, if my memories are, are good, when I meet a, a stranger, the amygdala, the conductor, and uh, the the amygdala may be understand whether a stranger is good or bad. The amygdala, of course, has no eyes. The amygdala is blind. Blind discrimination comes from the cortex. But even before the cortex responds, the amygdala already knows whether that stranger is good or bad. By comparing the quality of this stimulus with the memory or, and the memories or, that I stored in the hippocampus that shows the fact that in order to be good at loving, we must have had a caregiver, a parent who loved us. But the good news uh, was uh, told by the colleague, we can always learn to love. We can always have healthy feelings in the future. There's a recent study that was published on Nature that published that there are stem cells in the hippocampus. And this was also found in the optoptic samples of people of 90 years of age. That means that um, we can still be able to fall in love and to learn uh, till the last day of our life. So this is the um, um, circuit that is activated when we fall in love. Fall in love. Try to bear in mind these naming these names will go back to them. So we fall in love because serotonin is low, because we have a lot of noradrenaline, and then there's uh, oxytocin that is responsible for positive feelings, for joy, and it uh, calms down uh, stress. So when we are in love, when we have, are in a couple, we are healthier. We don't uh, um, become ill. When we have a single life, uh, it's uh, easier to 
uh, become sick, males more than females. And maybe oxytocin might play a fundamental role in this because it's a powerful anti-inflammatory uh, substance and might be used, uh, used to treat patients uh, uh, with a severe form of COVID-19. So as I said, oxytocin is important because it calms down the stress, but it all activates uh, the uh, dopaminergic uh, 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 pathway through the reward circuit di eh, quello che sottende il piacere. Quindi è questa molecola che velocemente viene sintetizzata che va da una parte all'altra. This molecule that is uh, synthesized very rapidly uh, but also in the margin of the brain and perhaps it's also produced up there. Uh, we often think of the brain and of uh, brain maps, but we are a whole noradrenaline, oxytocin uh, flow through the blood. We have a brain and brain maps, but we shouldn't forget our body through which em emotions are expressed. So it's really like a play and a stage, and you have to consider all of these components. So these uh, extraordinary systems uh, that uh, make us feel happy may really uh, function properly. I think that you might have recognized in the dopaminergic system as the system that gives us joy but also addiction. Most uh, abuse substances uh, then end up uh, impairing uh, the dopamine system and this uh, brain system. And this leads us uh, to the first type of harmful love. This is a subjective harmful love. It's uh, detrimental for those uh, who feel it. I'm uh, saying this uh, very humbly because um, uh, artists uh, come first before us. There is this beautiful sonnet by Shakespeare where there is a very clear description of what uh, affective dependence is. A dep uh, affective dependence is a disproportionate love. It's a, a, di a distorted attachment to a partner. This is typically a female pathology. So attachment to a man who's uh, worthless, uh, who doesn't love us, uh, who stays with us because he has nothing else to do, because uh, we are prone to all his desires. And you see that more or less all the clinical features of this kind of dependence reminds us of addiction, uh, substance addiction. Uh, sometimes there is, in this case, uh, an inborn dopamine deficit. Mm, but uh, there is a beautiful book published by Norton on this pathology, women who love too much. Well, they have a history of child abuse or neglect from their mothers or absent mothers. <coughs> so these women uh, have built uh, um, love maps in the hippocampus that prevent them from loving, let's say, properly in, in the sense that they cannot love uh, with joy. And the love maps who do not get built or that are distorted, uh, well, don't uh, uh, perhaps uh, follow. Uh, the, 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 these stories are repeated uh, with all the children of a same mother, mother. And let's move to another aspect of love that uh, creates uh, so many problems. What is uh, jealousy? It's a green-eyed monster. Uh, it's a monster that does not love uh, the flesh he nourishes himself on. Uh, defining jealousy is not easy equally. And uh, perhaps uh, this is the best uh, the definition uh, given uh, by an Australian uh, uh, scientist. It's the perception of risk. Uh, 
uh, of loss of a significant uh, relationship. When one partner perceives that the relationship is under some real or imaginary threat of loss from a rival. So the common sense is that there is not love without a jealousy. But what does this mean? If jealousy is, let's say, normal, standard, if it's not uh, an impairment of uh, character or it's not, uh, so it's, it's accepted. If it's uh, not something that has been created by men to submit women, well, if we accept the idea that the jealousy is an important factor of a true love, but uh, it must be like a spice. You uh, put a spice in your meal, but you should not be aware that it is there. So if jealousy is strictly associated with love, then it must have a reason when love uh, uh, has a reason. But uh, why is it so that it is still there? It is likely to be a warning signal that activates the areas we have seen, we see when we are in love, that warns us that our young, beautiful part might be unfaithful to us. So it's a potential threat. And when is jealousy normal, ordinary? When is, isn't it? When is it that it is not harmful? Well, it is not awful, harmful if it is, does not cause a pain to the, per, the individual experiencing it. And it usually calms down or disappears through reassurance from the partner. Morbid pathology is a complex phenomenon. It may be severe or even very severe. It is usually chronic, it's long lasting, or it is recurrent. Um, it is not responding to reassurance or to the evidence that there is no infidelity. And it is causing much suffering to the individual and to the partner. And the other problem with the jealousy is that uh, Often, the person experiencing it uh, loses uh, ground, uh, is no longer in touch with reality, and may suffer from the so-called Othello syndrome. Morbid uh, uh, jealousy is often uh, the symptom of an underlying disorder, including alco alcohol uh, uh, alcoholism, uh, substance abuse, and neurological disorders. But is it a specific uh, uh, a specific pathology? Well. Othello syndrome was studied years ago. Today, uh, morbid pathology, morbid jealousy is considered to be a symptom of other uh, nosological uh, categories. For instance, uh, depression or panic disorder. It may be a symptom of panic people who cannot get go out of their homes because they fear uh, anxiety attacks and uh, then they uh, they fear that their partners may betray them or oh, jealousy may be a type of jealousy typical of obsessive compulsive disorders recurring th thoughts and uh, we have demonstrated in some um, trials that jealous patients, uh, obsessive, uh, obsessively jealous uh, patients have a specific expression of uh, serotonin. 
can you can see that when these systems are involved, the serotonin and dopamine that are so important for our brain and for our social interaction, most of our brain is in charge of making us social beings. Well, when there is an impairment of these systems, we have a problem in our social behavior. There may be paranoia. I have no doubt that my partner is unfaithful to, to me. Othel is vulnerable. Uh, he has married a beautiful uh, young woman, and he is an ugly man. And uh, he starts having doubts, obsessive doubts, and then delusion. Uh, just a handkerchief uh, uh, convinces him that uh, Desdemona was unfaithful to him. So, uh, uh, what is the perfect balance? The perfect balance must be achieved between these two important neurotransmitters, which, by the way, are interconnected. interconnected. When the serotonin goes up, dopamine goes down, and vice versa. Of course, there are continuous fluctuations throughout our lives, but what is important is that fluctuations are not too profound. So, when there are fluctuations, uh, uh, there may be problems uh, with obs obsessive compulsive disorders or vice versa. There may be delusion. And uh, we know that delusion is, is given to an excess in dopamine. And based on a clinical observation, we have designed a model, of course, uh, we have dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, but many other agents. These are important because they are very archaic. They come from uh, very uh, from very ancient animals before us. So uh, normal serotonin, uh, dopamine, normal dopamine, normal jealousy. But when serotonin starts going down, uh, jealousy goes up. When serotonin goes down, uh, uh, there is obsessive jealousy. If at the same time a dopamine goes up, uh, well, there is a loss of awareness of the disorder and paranoia kicks in. It's quite important uh, to understand the jealousy and to uh, investigate into jealousy. Jealousy is often the fuel that triggers uh, the guns of uh, uh, some partners. It's often the fuel, the basis of homicides, suicides that uh, uh, qu are quite uh, everyday uh, events in our country. It happens every day. And the good thing is that uh, Women have more oxytocin than men, so perhaps um, women love more than men, except at the beginning when the child is born. Mother and father have the same levels of oxytocin, then let's say we make up. And uh, jealousy must not be underestimated. Never forget it, especially uh, female partners are very forgiving. Well, I will uh, help him, I will manage, but when anger, uh, uh, anger sets in or when there is buttering, um, you must be worried from the very first minute. We have undertaken uh, several studies of starting from clinical ob observation in patients, uh, in Parkinson's patients. Uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, we know, is due to a deficit in uh, dopamine. In this, uh, in Parkinson's disease, uh, therapy is often based on dopamine, dopamine agonists. Uh, at that time, 
at that at that point, very frequently, we observe uh, uh, a typical kind of delusion, a uh, delusional jealousy, and so we have uh, investigated uh, this assumption. Our assumption is that uh, dopamine agonists increase uh, dopamine in a specific subcortical area, that is uh, the striatal uh, ventral nucleus that is very important in the attribution of salience, that is to say the attribution of meaning to a stimulus, which is the relationship in this case. When dopamine is impaired or when there is too much dopamine in that specific location, the uh, uh, notion of a salience is altered. And so from neutral, it uh, be may become very significant. Uh, dopamine is altered in the mesolimbic area of the brain, which also <coughs> sorry, impairs cognitivity. And this thoughts co cognition. And at this point, uh, we have misconstruct real events and delusion sets in. This is um, uh, an explanation that I will briefly summarize uh, later on. At the same time, a jealous person is uh, hyper aroused and uh, there is uh, also perhaps a distorted form or attachment in jealous individuals. So very simply, when there is uh, too much dopamine in that uh, nucleus, in Parkinson, probably. in the striatum, delusion sets in and this is the real delusional uh, uh, jealousy. Uh, the individual is convinced that uh, his or her partner is unfaithful. Uh, I remember a patient who was convinced that uh, her, his wife was unfaithful because red cars were passing by and uh, in, the, in the area. So you can understand, jealousy must be never underestimated, especially by psychologists and psychiatrists that are often asked to help because jealousy is often associated with anger, violence, and stalking. What is a stalking? Stalking is a persecution, a form of persecution, persecution of a former romantic partner or persecution of a, a search for closeness with a stranger or with a famous person, with a celebrity. We uh, even don't know, and of, who, of course, does not reciprocate us. I remember Jodie Foster, for instance, in the past. Jodie Foster was persecuted by a, a, a stalker who uh, then tried to assassinate uh, Ronald Reagan. And he wrote a letter to Jody before that, telling her, I will assassinate uh, Reagan so that then afterwards uh, you will love me. Sometimes there is a real underestimation of the dangers, of the risks uh, in that are quite common with uh, this kind of uh, jealousy. And these uh, jealous individuals are aggressive in 90% of the cases. Let's, uh, let's imagine a stalker, hyperactive, obsessive, uh, delusional. From a psychological point of view, there is a complete alteration or distortion of an affective relationship with a constant, repetitive, iterative kind of thinking that despite police intervention, despite sanctions or whatever, pushes the individual to continue to behave in a certain way. There is a loss of control. 
there is a loss of contact with reality and uh, there is uh, then a kind of distortion that may lead to anger, impulsiveness uh, or aggressive behavior. The stalker is not aware of the risk. He is, to, he is entirely lost. He is no longer aware of what may happen. And in this case, too, we think that this may be due to biochemical alterations. In a stalker, serotonin has almost disappeared. Serotonin is very, very low. Noradrenaline is uh, uh, very high, and uh, probably there is uh, the uh, uh, dependence uh, uh, circuitry, uh, dopamine, that is uh, hyperactivated. There is uh, perhaps a chronic insufficient of insufficiency of dopamine in these individuals, which tends to increase uh, uh, aggressive behavior. And uh, so delusion, uh, delusion regarding uh, the certainty of a relationship. So there is probably a totally distorted form of attachment. And this probably results from an attachment style that was not firmly developed in, infant, in infancy. Probably, and from what we know from uh, clinical and uh, legal cases, uh, there may be a history of uh, abuse, of rape, uh, of neglect, uh, or it may be there may be a history of orphanage, uh, for instance. So uh, distorted uh, oxytocin uh, development, and I would uh, close by saying that I hope that. Uh, uh, I uh, succeeded in making it clear that uh, love is embedded in human nature. It's built inside us. Uh, we uh, already know that. Uh, we have also seen uh, that it's quite easy to get in love, to fall in love, but in order to uh, undertake a re to, to in order to be in a real romance, you need time. There are biological systems uh, that help us. We may change partners along our lives. We live so many years, and we are likely at a certain point uh, of our life to have uh, curiosity prevailing over uh, fidelity. <coughs> so in order to have oxytocin and dopamine in the right balance, we need to move. We've seen the circuitry. We've seen how when these are impaired, the, that same circuitry may uh, lead to problems, morbid pathology, stalking, impulsiveness, and aggressiveness. So we should say that love, loving is a risky thing. Love is a fearless fear because stress systems are activated, and we love that. But as a standard road, love is a beautiful flower, but we must be brave enough to pick her up from the edge of a pre precipice. I hope uh, I made it. I've made it clear that the, those two systems are very fragile. Everything works smoothly if we uh, are born in a nice setting with uh, caring and loving parents, and if in our infancy nothing bad ha happens, when we are adults, more resilient uh, with a healthy brain, with the, uh, solid love maps, we may withstand. Uh, everything. Uh, as Goethe said, uh, love is a beautiful flower, but uh, 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 there is only one certainty in the world because nothing is more essential than love. Uh, but uh, so, what are we talking about today? We are talking about a science that can help us love properly in the right manner because throughout our life we can change, we can stop 
becoming attached to partners that make us suffer and that do not love love us as we wished. So the science love is not creating a love potion, which is quite easy. Uh, but uh, uh, science teaches us how to love, how to respect those extraordinary circuits. I am really fond of this topic. Science should also help us avoid love deviating from the right pathway and to prevent harmful love. Without brain, there is no mind. And without biology, there are no human psychological phenomena. And I would like to thank the organizers of this science festival. It's the second time I've come here. And I'm so glad to see so many people in the room in the era of COVID. And finally, I'd like to thank our uh, our host Viviana Kassam who gathered so many outstanding women for this event